everybody, Neon Tank back here with some more World of Tanks content for you. Today we're going to be doing a tank review on the Tier 10 American Medium Tank, the M48A1 Patton. So in this review you're going to see a bunch of stuff. You're going to see first a quick look at the research line, how to get to this vehicle. We're going to take a quick look into the stats of this vehicle, uh, the modules, how it compares to other Tier 10 mediums, some of the crew skills, the equipment, and I'm going to have a couple of replays packed in at the end for you so you can get a feel for how this tank is going to play if you have it or if you're looking at getting it. Okay, so M48 Patton. We'll take a look at the tech tree here. So this is the only Tier 10 American medium tank. So you start down here at the T1 Cunningham. Nobody's important or interested in seeing that at all. So we're going to be looking through this here. So you go through the T2 medium nothing real fancy going through these tanks here the M2 medium they all seem to play pretty alike you painfully have to go through the M3 Lee everybody's favorite tank of course not uh, once you get to the tier 5 though the M4 Sherman things start to turn around things start to get a little better the M4 Sherman you get to uh, mount a pretty good 76 millimeter but you also get a 105 millimeter howitzer can be a good tank uh, but then you go through the M4A3E8, which is right there on the tech tree. Or you can go through the Jumbo as well and make your way back up to the T20, which is what I did. So the Jumbo was a pretty good tank. There's some good armor on the front of that E2. And you get into the T20, which not a big fan of. It's a tough tank to play. The T20 is one of the more underpowered of the Tier 7 mediums. But... In my opinion, none of the Tier 7 mediums are really any good at all. Now, the Pershing, the Pershing is when you start to get into the characteristics that follow with the M46 Patton and then the M48 at Tier 10. With the Pershing, you start to get a punchier gun that's more consistent. Uh, you get a pretty decent turret. seems to block quite a bit. Besides that, the armor's hopeless. But the gun depression and the rest of the tanks seem to perform pretty well. I did enjoy this tank. Uh, definitely recommend it if you do enjoy tanks with turret armor and gun depression. M46 Patton, Tier 9. Uh, this tank was frustrating. Uh, people m have very mixed reviews on this one. does mount a very, very good 105mm T5 E1 M2 gun, but it is hopelessly inaccurate for a Tier 9 medium. And that's what kind of turned me off about this one. But then we get up here to the M48, which is where we are. So, M48 Patton. The research cost is 160000 experience and a purchase price of $6.1 million. Pretty standard for a Tier 10 vehicle there with the purchase price. Uh, top speed. Let's see, we'll get into the stats here. So, it has 2,000 hit points. Pretty standard. It's not uh, not far off of anything else. The uh, weight limit is 4802, the way I have it set up, but the load limit is 50.35 tons. So you are able to mount all the equipment you need, and its suspension does seem to carry pretty well. 810 horsepower, uh, giving it a top speed of 45 kilometers an hour, which is not very impressive at all. It's very, very slow for a tier 10 medium. It's right down there at the very bottom with the FV4202. Um, power to weight ratio is pathetic, but it does get a very good gun. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So traverse speed 50 degrees per second. That's uh, probably one of the stronger suits of the vehicle there. 50 degrees traverse speed on the tracks. Um, definitely helps when you combine it with that 40 degrees of traverse speed on the turret so combined 90 degrees traverse speed per second this thing can quickly re-engage targets very very effectively so we'll take a look at the armor now uh, it's saying 152 millimeters of hull armor uh, I'd like somebody to show me where that is because I've never been able to find that uh, this whole front plate is just an automatic penetration from basically anything that you're going to see. Most scouts will go through it. All tier rates will go through it, unless it's at a crazy angle like this here. 
you're not really going to bounce anything, whether it be lower plate or upper plate. Take a look at the turret here. Turret armor on the front is 177. Um, that 177 might be back here behind the gun mantlet, but once you get out to this rounded part here, it's uh, once again very easy game to penetrate. Um, anything seems to go through here. The only way that you seem to be able to bounce a shot is if you look at the back of the mantlet there, it has to go through the top and lose penetration value and not be able to make it through the rest of the front. Uh, looking at it from the front, you have this very prominent weak spot up top, that curse of the American heavy tanks, medium tanks, and tank destroyers. The uh, cupola up there for the machine gun. So that's uh, makes it difficult when you're trying to play hull down because that's just a giant shoot me here box. Side armor, hopeless. Looking at about 76 on the hull and the turret. And then the rear armor, uh, HE rounds can go through the back of this thing with about 38 on the hull and 50 on the turret. Not really going to have too many people shooting HE at you, but you've got to be careful of that for sure. 420 meters view range, very, very strong view range. Um, couple that with, like you see here, I've got recon on my commander. I've got situational awareness here on my loader, who's acting as a radio operator as well. Uh, run coded optics, but we'll get into that equipment a little bit later on. 745 meter signal range. And now we're going to take a look at the gun. All right, so the gun here, 105 millimeter M68. Pull up the characteristics. So a 6.82 rounds per minute rate of fire. It's pretty good. Uh, my reload's down to about 7.8 seconds, I believe. And that's with a four per crew. So seems to be an okay reload. Uh, nothing bad or nothing to complain about on that at all. Penetration, 268 millimeters. Pretty strong. It's um, also assisted by 330 meters penetration when you fire the heat rounds which I don't do too often I think I do in the one replay here at the end of this video but uh, you also have 53 millimeters of penetration with your high explosive now that can be important when you come across artillery um, that 53 millimeters does seem to be able to go through anything like the side of a GW Tiger or even a T92 this helps you secure that one shot kill so as standard um, the aim times are very, very good for uh, tier 10 medium. I think the only one that's uh, down is the bat chat. But uh, the M48 gets two second aim time. Very strong. I uh, couple that, I'm pretty sure, with an enhanced gun laying drive. And a 0 0.36 dispersion at 100 meters. Could be better. It's nothing, uh, nothing fantastic, but it seems to work okay. Take a look at the ammunition here. As standard with all other tier 10 medium tanks, it fires APCR, armor piercing composite rigid, as standard ammunition. So that's your 268 penetration there, which does allow the shell to travel a little faster. Um, I do enjoy that for sure, you don't have to leak quite as much. But also with the heat rounds, you don't lose penetration over distance. Okay, so let's take a look here at some of the other tier 10 mediums will compare the guns and the tanks themselves. So we've got the M48 Patton. We'll pull up the everybody's favorite T62A because it's so popular at tier 10. And let's pull up the STB-1. Okay, so we've got the M48 there on the left, T62 in the middle, and the STB on the right. Okay, so comparing hit points, the M48's got about 50 hit points more. Nothing uh, nothing too major there. The M48 does weigh 10 tons more than both of these vehicles here, the STB or the T62. So it's good for if you're trying to ram something. But you also lose a lot of speed compared to these other ones. 
You can see here the T62, 50, 53 on the STB, and a sloppy 45 on the Patton. Traverse speed, it's uh, actually behind both the STB and the T62A for hull traverse. They have 56 and 52 there. Uh, hull armor, you see here on the T62 it says 100 millimeters on the front, but that's also with a big slope, and we all know that T62s can be bouncy. Uh, turret armor on both the STB and the T62A, very strong. The uh, STB surprisingly only says 132 millimeters there, but the way that that turret works, it uh, tends to eat a lot of shells. T62A has that rounded turret that uh, happens to be the Russian medium tank curse. Whenever you're shooting at them, those rounded turrets just never seem to be penable. All right, what else do we have here? Okay, so the rate of fire, much faster on the T62A. It's also faster on the STB-1. So that gives the damage per minute total on the M48 uh, a lot less than the STB. I'm pretty sure the STB is at the very top there with the FE4202, which recently received a buff. Uh, view range, the M48 has them beat. We got 420 versus 400 and 410 on the STB. And then signal range, which nobody cares about at tier 10. When it comes to the guns, we'll compare the gun on the STB-1 here. It's also firing 105mm. It's going to be a good comparison between the two. There we have it. So the STB is on the left, m 48s on the right. Both 105 millimeter guns. The STB has a 7.5 rate of fire versus the 6.8 on the M48. Uh, you have 10 more millimeters of penetration on the Patton. Uh, same with the heat rounds and same with the high explosive. Same average damage. Same accuracy, 0.36. And the Patton gets a 0.3 second quicker aiming time versus the STB-1. Alright, so there's a quick look at comparing it to other vehicles there at Tier 10. This tank also does seem to be quite similar to the FV4202 in many categories. Uh, when it comes to gun performance, how slow it is, and just the way that everything seems to penetrate it. Another thing I wanted to note here quickly, uh, just the size of the M48 itself, if you see here, this is a medium tank, but we'll compare it to a tier 9 heavy here, I got my M103. Practically the same size vehicle. Uh, it's very big silhouette on the M48. Switch back here to the Patton. Besides the turret, the, the hulls are practically the same size, and the turret's also pretty pretty big on this pattern so you have to find decently big rocks to hide behind with this vehicle crew skills so crew skills on this thing medium tank my commander here I have brothers in arms actually through my whole crew I have brothers in arms definitely recommend that for your first perk once you get to 100% uh, then I went with six cents you definitely want that you want to know when you're spotted so you know when to pull back recon very important, it's going to increase your maximum view range. And then I went with uh, Mentor. Just uh, until I can get that up to 100%, then I might put Jack of All Trades on. Now you could argue that repairs and camouflage are important for this medium tank, but I'm kind of focusing on getting my commander with some of the more important skills that I find this tank suffers with. Uh, this tank tends to lose a lot of crew members and a lot of modules. Uh, especially the ammo rack. So that's why Jack of All Trades is great for the crew members. Gunner. On my gunner, I've got Brothers in Arms. Snapshot just helps that uh, traverse speed on the turret. Helps you pull off a lot of shooting on the move, which this tank th is very, very good at. If you lock on and uh, just keep driving, it does seem to hit quite a lot of shots on the move. I do have Dead Eye to help increase taking out. Uh, enemy modules, crew members, 
Uh, seems to work. I checked my uh, module damage after each battle. Seemed to do quite a bit of crew damage with this vehicle here. And then I have repairs on my last one, just because nobody likes being tracked. What other skills could you go with? You have designated target or armor, camouflage. Probably going to end up putting camouflage on my crew for their next perk, just to uh, try and hide this tank, this big silhouette. It seems to get spotted even though it has the view range. Take a look at the driver next. Gets a lot of great driver skills here. Brothers in Arms. Smooth Ride. Uh, smooth Ride is great on this vehicle. Helps those shots on the move once again. Take a look at Clutch Braking. Helps that traverse speed just, to, just to make it even better. Might as well bring it up as much as we can. Then I went with Off-Road Driving. Off-Road Driving reduces the ground resistance on soft terrain. And... Uh, lowers the ground resistance overall whether you're on uh, a road or on that soft terrain so that's uh, great on any medium tank once again probably gonna go with camouflage next last we get to the loader who also works as our radio operator on this vehicle and he's got brothers in arms situational awareness extend that view range out safe stowage because this tank gets ammo racked very often I've got repairs on him. These other radio operator skills, call for vengeance, signal boosting, relaying, not super important here at tier 10. I guess you could argue that call for vengeance can work, but this uh, signal range, it's not quite as important at tier 10. Now I am looking at getting intuition on this guy here. I do tend to switch shells quite often as you're going to see in the uh, Coming up replays here, you'll find that I switch between my APCR, my heat rounds, and even my high explosive when I'm trying to hunt down those artillery. And we'll throw camouflage on him next. Okay, so equipment for this vehicle. Uh, gun rammer, obviously. Any vehicle that you can put a gun rammer on, definitely recommend it. Just helps bring down that reload by 10%, which can be massive. Uh, vertical stabilizer helps with that shooting on the move. I recommend a vertical stabilizer almost on any tank. You can also fit it on as well. Uh, the only tank that doesn't get it that I think should is the Cromwell, but things overpowered down there at tier 6 as it is. If this thing here could fit a vertical stabilizer, it would be even better. But it's a great tank. I'll have a uh, full tank review of this coming up shortly. Back to the M48 Patton. Uh, my last one I went with coated optics. Uh, don't tend to sit still too often in this vehicle, so on the move, it's going to add another 10% to my view range. So once you put the coated optics, the situational awareness, recon, 100% crew, this thing seems to be pretty good at spotting enemy vehicles. Could argue binocular telescopes, but once again, I don't really sit still too often. Ventilation would help bring down the reload just a little bit and I'm actually thinking about switching that out for my coated optics but I'm still thinking if that's a good idea or not I do tend to spot a lot of vehicles with this alright so we'll just take a quick look at personal stats on this vehicle so I have 400 almost 440 battles in the patent uh, 224 of those are victories, 206 defeats, and 9 draws. It gives me a 51% victory rate. Uh, high victory rates can be tough at tier 10. But I'm I'm, a hap I'm happy with 51. It's okay for now. I'll try and bring it up a little bit more. 76% uh, hit ratio. That could probably come up a little bit more. That is because I shoot on the move a lot, though, so you can miss quite often with that. 1.43 damage ratio, uh, 2.33 destruction ratio, which is very strong. Uh, armor use efficiency, that just shows you how poor this vehicle is for armor, 0 0.27. Average of 661 experience per battle, and I cause an average of 2,432 damage to enemy vehicles per battle. Alright, so... 
from here we'll take a look at a couple of replays I've got coming up for you one on Sand River and one on Malinovka stay tuned and check in for both of those videos right now okay so we're here on Sand River Let's go. tier 10 battle we're in our patent we've got scissor tech and pirate both from the clan UAW here they're in their bat chat 25 tons and we're headed up to the north about a zero corner there up on top of the mountains and we're gonna see what we can do with our medium tanks so they're gonna zip by us there same with the 1390 this tank uh, can't really keep up with those medium tanks they are excessively fast and this one it's just not quick enough. Really grown a liking for this vehicle, even though I do complain about a lot of things with it. The armor could be better. The accuracy could be a little bit better. The speed definitely could be better. But it also has its bonuses and its benefits. And they seem to outweigh some of the negatives most of the time so one of our bat chats there, I think that's Pirate he's being really aggressive, he's headed after one of their tanks that just got spotted up there he goes, quickly takes him down now he's on reload so he's on his way back Scissor and I are going to pull up here on top of the mountain get a couple shots on this IS-8 completely uh, missed that first shot not really happy about that. We end up taking a hit there, lose our tracks. Put the second shot in. Accuracy on this gun you can see there. Scissor takes him down. Looking up top here. Spot their 263. No way we're gonna penetrate a 263 from back here. Going downhill, we can pick up some speed. You can see we just got hit there. I think that might have been the Tiger 2. Just blew our tracks off. Gonna come around and circle this Ferdinand here, and he gets ammo racked, which is always nice. So now we're gonna take a look at the 263. Lock on to him. And his day is pretty much over at this point. He's getting circled by everything. We'll come in and we'll steal that kill just because we can. And now we got Tiger 2 up on the hill. So we'll auto lock onto him. Fire a couple on the move. We do hit there. We don't penetrate unfortunately but it just shows you with the vertical stabilizer equipment shooting on the move it seems to work really well. He says as he misses the second shot. We'll unlock here. We'll put a good shot right in the front. And we'll put the second shot in and we'll finish him off. Pirate gets taken out by that T-30. It's a little aggressive there. He picked up quite a, quite a big chunk of damage even though he was only in the battle for about three and a half minutes. Bounce the second shot off the T-30. But we will not bounce this one. So yeah, I'm gonna bite my own tongue here. I was complaining about the mobility on this tank. It's not fast but you can also get yourself into more trouble the faster you are so I guess this thing can try to keep you out of trouble by only allowing you to go 45 typically but those positions when you wanna shoot a 5100 like this here and then race up over the mountain without getting shot just not possible with 45 kilometers per hour Fifty-one hundred takes a beating, and we start spotting some other tanks that 
out in the field here. Plant one into the IS-3. Scissor Tech sweeps in. Picks up the kill on that guy there. We put a good shot in the T-34. We decided to shoot him instead of the T-54. He won. End up getting both of them. Which is always nice. And we're trying to go for the top gun on the E-50M. But we run out of time. So that was a fun battle there. Take a look at the post-battle results here. Yeah. Uh, Second class mastery badge, bruiser, fighter, fire for effect. We picked up five kills, damaged a whole bunch of tanks, nine of them. Got nine, nine different tanks that we did some damage to there, which is pretty good. Take a look at the team scores. You can see our platoon on top there. Scissor Tech had a great game in his bad chat. Picking up uh, almost 5,400 damage. We managed to scoop up 3,900 with our five kills. And Pirate, even though he went out within the first three and a half minutes, still had 3,000 damage. Their uh, E50M, Maelstrom, 4,221 damage. It's a tough loss for him there. His team didn't really perform quite the way they should have. But I think we just overcame the top of the map and really turned the tide there. Take a look at the detailed report. Fired 19 shots. We had 14 hits and 12 penetrations. We only received 4 hits. Two of them penetrated. Two of them bounced, surprisingly. That's not typical to have a 50% ratio like that, but it can happen. So I don't run a premium account, but we made a 7,400 credit profit and 927 base experience uh, due to a mission. I'm not sure what was going on there. It might have been that 1.3 times for the platoon play. Uh, ended up pulling away with 1,390 total experience from that battle. So let's take a look at the next one here. Out on Malinovka now. Still in our M48 Patton. Still platooned with Scissor Tech and Pirate. These two clanmates I play with quite often. They're definitely capable of carrying their own weight and when we're together the three of us are a pretty deadly combination. So Scissors there and his T-57 Heavy. He has a bit of a rough game here on this, this map today. And Pirates in his T-110E4. So we're going to take the Patton up to the standard spot there. Up on the hill. I don't like to mess around with anything in the field. And medium tanks quite often. So we'll just take this straight up to the top of the hill see what we can find and see what we can shoot at I do fire quite an abundance of gold rounds in this battle not too proud of it but in all honesty I'm pretty sure I just completely blanked out and forgot to switch back so in chat there I'm calling for some help up on this hill noticing that I might not be the only one going up, however I'm the only one that seems to be in any sort of a hurry to get up to this hill and try and defend at the top. We've got a pretty standard layout for our tanks. And the enemy team only has one artillery, which is nice, we don't have to worry too too much about him. He's focused on scissor all game anyways. So we spot a tank there, tee him up, uh, we get spotted, six cents goes off so we're going to fall back, you can see, just waggling the tank just in case anybody's looking at us, just gives anybody a 
more difficult shot. Alright, so we see the E5. That shot blows my mind. I don't know how that one missed. Thought we had a perfect side profile on his turret there. But we get spotted, so we'll back out. Using this windmill for some cover. And it's around this point that I notice they have not sent too much up the hill. But there is the IS-4 and he brought a couple of friends with him. So they were just hiding behind the bushes. We put two good shots into that guy there. We'll back out. T-110E4 is dealing with the IS-4. Now, we bounce off the IS-4 there. I immediately queue up my next shell to be a uh, heat round. The APCR, although it is able to go through the front of the IS-4, it's not guaranteed. So we'll just make sure he goes down. See the Fosh down there? Good shot on the side of the Fosh. Now we know he can't see us from here. We're not spotted. Take another blind shot. And there's the E5. Plant one on the side of his turret. This one actually hits him. Now taking a look at the situation here. Fall back a bit. Some shots down in the middle. Got to take those blind shots. It's a two second aim time. Might as well take the shot if you're loaded. But let's take a look at how this tank's going to perform right here. So you can see on this ridge, although the gun depression is strong on this tank, it's not that strong. So I'm still fighting with all those hills. I get spotted. Bit of a disaster there. So I'm going to fall back to where this T-32 is. Try and use more of an elevation. Get shots down onto them. Put one into that guy there. Pirate ends up finishing off that guy and we see the T-62 so we'll take him out gun performance right there pretty stellar every time we were loaded we pulled the trigger as soon as we could so we're using our versatility you know realizing the situation might as well rush down the hill keep up the pressure on these guys We get down to this building here. And it's around this point that I stop and realize I am in no man's land. So T-30 over there. He doesn't see us until we shoot. So we shoot, we get spotted. And we bounce a shot from the right. Which I'm guessing to have been the Fosh 155. But the T-30 penetrates us. You can see right there side of the turret it's just never gonna bounce on this however if this was an object 140 you never know right through the upper hull there as well now it's a game of waiting I'm not in a big hurry to get shot here T49 is Looking to go out and get some lights. I let them know some good locations that they might be hiding in. See the T-30 again. Pop him. He gets all kinds of messed up there. And he gets taken down by the E-4. That E-4 
keep an eye on him. He uh, has a pretty stellar game. So now we get a little gutsy here. You can smell the blood in the water. And we see the Fosh 155. Using our gun depression, looking over the hill. Try and hit his top bar. And miss it. And now we are between a rock and a hard place. Get smacked by him. AT-15 on the side. Really nothing we can do. And he finishes off our game on this one. Okay, so another decent battle there in the Patton. Only picked up one kill this time. Kills aren't important. We got the win. We got third class fire for effect and confederate. Did uh, critical damage to only three of them there. I think it was mostly just track damage. Take a look at the team scores. The uh, T110 E4 on our team he had a pretty good game there, almost picking up about 5,000 damage. Uh, we played our part for sure. He had 3,757 damage, our one kill. You can see Pirate there, he had a little over 2,000. But he also had four kills. So as much as somebody might want to call it kill stealing, it's also securing it. It's really important. It doesn't matter if tank's got 10 hit points or a thousand taking the gun out of the game is what makes all the difference at the end scissor ended up having a tough go there it's alright he normally shows me up in all the other battles anyways so I'll take him on this one quick look at the detailed report fired 16 shots 13 hit 10 penetrations we received 8 hits five penetrations, three non-penetrations. Actually managed to block 980 damage. It's funny I'm talking about how the armor doesn't work on this tank and through these replays it has been working so not sure what's going on with that but I'm not complaining. So we actually traveled almost 2.7 kilometers so we had a good good haul there through that battle did almost a thousand assistance there. Now we lost quite a bit of credits. You can see the auto resupply ammunition was almost up to 40,000 credits. I did fire all eight of my high explosive anti-take rounds and that's expensive. I probably shouldn't have fired them. I did need them to go through the IS-4 but just got kinda carried away with them there. We pulled off 753 base experience for a total of 1130 with our 377 for the personal mission payout. And overall, pretty solid battle once again for the Patton. Okay, so that's our look today at the M48A1 Patton. Overall, consensus on this tank it can perform well in the right hands it's decently versatile it's not really too situational it can get the job done definitely locks to look forward to through the whole line any anything past tier 5 it's pretty fun to play lots of opportunities and I actually have another video of this vehicle I'll be posting battle I had on Abbey that was an absolute heartbreak yes bit of a spoiler there but I'll have that video up shortly alright thanks for stopping in guys thanks for taking a look at the M48 Patton wanna like subscribe or if you have any questions or comments about this video or any questions you have about this tank in general just let me know in the comment section down below and I will get an answer back to you as quick as I can. Alright, thanks for stopping in guys and we'll catch you on the next one.